All right, I want to do a quick video here just to demonstrate a couple of cool things you can do with column formatting in SharePoint. So if you have not seen this, heard of this, worked with this before, basically you can use uh, some JSON code to control how contents in SharePoint list or library columns are rendered and even add some functionality to them. Um, so this is really just a demo. I'm going to provide the uh, a walkthrough of creating the list. Basically what we're creating is a, a self-service task list where tasks would be created. People will uh, volunteer to take them and then mark them as complete. Um, so this is not going to be a detailed look at the JSON. I will provide the JSON that you'll need to recreate this in the description of the video. Um, but I'm not going to go through and, and kind of pick it apart and explain how everything works. Um, just because uh, some of it I don't quite understand myself, uh, but it works. So let's get right to it. So in my escape planning site here, as part of the escape committee, we have tasks, escape tasks that need to be done. So I'm going to click new and select list, and we'll just start with a blank list, and I'll call it escape tasks. And create and I can go back and add the space to that list name after it's created. There we go. So I'll save that now uh, in our task list we'll have a title for the task. I'll add a multiple line of text column here for task details. And tasks are going to be assigned to people so we need to add a column for assigned to. And I'll add a column, use a person type column, and call that assigned to. Uh, now, it is important to note that if you want to use the exact code that I'm going to provide, you'll want to name your columns exactly the same way. Uh, if you want to use your own columns or apply this to a list you already have, you'll just need to modify some of the, basically the references in the code to the column names to reflect the column, the internal column names in your list or library. Uh, so by using assign to here, even with a space, SharePoint will take that space out when it creates the column. So we'll end up with an internal name of assigned to without the space, and that's perfect. Uh, we'll say, yeah, show the profile photos, save that. Uh, and next, I'm going to add a status column because tasks have statuses. Uh, and the three statuses we're going to create are going to be, well, we'll get to that in a second. So again, call this task status. Um, three tasks or the statuses will be unassigned, assigned, and completed. And let me just change the color codes here. So unassigned will be yellow, assigned will be green, and completed will be red. Perfect. Uh, and it is kind of important to set the default value here to unassigned so that every new task, uh, as it's created, will automatically be set to unassigned. And I can save. And lastly, uh, because I want to know when these tasks are actually completed, and in other words, a timestamp, I want to add one more column here, and that will be a date and time column. And we'll call that date completed. And we'll include the time and hit save. All right, so easy enough. Uh, now that our list is ready, let's just add a couple of items to it just to, so we have some data to, to look at here. So we'll say maybe our first task is uh, distract guard dogs with stakes tunnel under north fence and get to Paris by morning. All right, so we're going to do those things. And I want to basically allow members of the escape planning committee to take those, uh, assign them, claim those tasks, and then complete them. So let me exit grid view here. Uh, now, the, this is kind of where the magic happens. We're going to add some formatting to the assigned to column and the task status column to make these actionable. So first off, let me grab, go over to my text editor here and grab my 
formatting for the assigned to column. And again, I'll include this in the description so you will have access to that. All right, so let me grab that, Control C. And then to apply the formatting, I just need to click on the column heading, uh, format this column, go to advanced mode, remove anything that's there and just paste that in. And again, if you look through this, you can kind of hopefully make some sense of it. But um, the point is, again, I'll provide this. There are places you can customize it if you need to, to change the column names, change the icons that are used, etc. But I'm not going to get into that here today. So I'll just hit save. So we'll see now that we have a claim button in that assigned to column. Uh, so if I close this, I can see that I can claim this task. And when I do, the task status updates, updates to assigned and I have an undo button here. So maybe I didn't mean to claim that one. I can click undo and it'll go back to unassigned. Likewise, other members of the team. So if I go over to Robert's profile here, refresh the page to see that escape task list, he'll see it and he can, maybe he wants to do the tunneling, so he'll grab that. And then when I go back to, over to my other user and refresh, we'll see that if someone else claimed it, I can't control that. So I can't undo it, I can't remove him, I can't claim it because it's already been claimed. And likewise, if I claim that first one again, there we go. So the next piece is basically allowing users to mark that they've completed that task. So right now they could basically edit this and you know change the task status to completed and then set the date completed. But I wanna do that as easily as possible. I wanna make it a single click. Uh, so again, I'm gonna to turn to another chunk of column formatting here. So let me go over and grab that JSON. And we'll see, and again, to apply it, I'll go to the test status column, column settings, format, advanced mode, just erase whatever is there, paste in the code, hit save, and close, and we'll see. The only noticeable thing is I now have this check mark, which basically means that I can complete this. Um, so let's say I'm assume that I'm done this. I can click the check mark. I'm done. The task status updates to completed and the date and time, the current date and time gets written into that date completed field. Likewise, over in Robert's view, he can do the same on his task, you know, the, the task that he chose to do. Now, if he were to undo this, um, then he can't complete it anymore because it's not assigned to him. He would have to again claim it and then he can mark that it's been completed and you're done. Uh, so again, this is a very simple example, but probably something that, that you might find useful in your environments, uh, in different situations you might run into. Um, and I won't say that the code is easy to write, but I'm going to provide that to you if you want to modify it. Uh, again, to change the, uh, the, the text here, the, the icons, or if you need to change it to account for different column names, you should be able to identify those places in the code to make whatever changes you need. Um, but this is just a, a topic that I've try, been trying to do and look at more and learn more about. Uh, and I thought this was a good example to share with you to kind of make it uh, you know much more practical use case than simply making the data look different or making the, the, the content of a column look a little bit different. Uh, so there you go. Hopefully this is useful to you. Uh, as I said, check the description for the actual JSON code that you need to use and have a great day.